call this the mystery of the shower pan leak because I don't know that it's a shower pan. I'm just going to call it the mystery of the shower leak, although that's a misnomer. The shower isn't leaking, although it could be. There's a lot of issues with this shower. It's a very, very nice shower, by the way. I like how it was enclosed. It's not a steam shower, but if you had an idea that, hey, I want to build a steam shower, this is the opening that you would have. It's about 20 inches or so, more or less, with the opening here. And it's an enclosed type of situation. So you would have a shower door that would encompass pretty much the whole opening here. And then you would have the steam mechanism down here and you would have yourself a steam shower. But anyway, getting back to the issue, this pan is leaking. I, well, again, we don't know that it's a pan. This is why I'm, it's a mystery to me. Oftentimes people call me in for jobs like this to ascertain the, the reason why they're having issues. And in this case, it's a concrete slab. So there's no telltale sign that you would have normally on a ceiling or somewhere where they're staining. Instead, they have gone into their sheetrock and they have noticed that they have really rotted wood. These uh, bottom seal plates here are pretty well rotted out. Uh, I can't some light on there. Um, they're pretty well rotted out and you can see that it's transferred up to the studs that are adjoining to the shower uh, and that's kind of the telltale sign that they have a problem with their shower leaking somewhere. Then there's a couple other issues that we have um, in regard to this floor, which you know I'm only noticing because I run into this from time to time. Uh, looks like wood, but of course it's tile. And overall the tile is looking good. There's no issues. You have a darker grout going on until you get over to the shower area. Then you have some, some white stuff going on. Um, and I was assured that this isn't anything like Ajax or Comet or anything like that. So my best guess, and I don't know it to be true, but it could be true. My best guess is when some people that don't know better, they'll know that they're going to have a dark grout, but yet they'll use a white thin set and the white thin set gets troweled out and the tile is put down. And then when you have water that's introduced to that white thin set, it bleeds up and then you end up with this little white staining going on. It's usually back asward though. Normally I'm, I'm ending up with a lighter tile with a darker stain and that's because they use a gray thin set whereas it was appropriate to use a white one and that same bleeding effect going for, is going on. So this tells me obviously something but this tells me more. This tells me that it's not only penetrated the wood but probably into the foundation i.e. the concrete below it and the concrete is so wet that it's just transferring that moisture up through the grout line and there begets the stain. But getting back to here, um, it really becomes a mystery. You can see there's a lot of fixtures going on, shower fixtures and stuff like that. In reality, well, there's only two, but there are some body sprays here. So if you added those in, you have six. Um, and you have mixers and diverters and all this other stuff. So I'm going to get to, the, to that issue in just a moment, but I want to clarify some of the stuff that I've talked about in other videos on to why things happen. Because this is a total guessing game, as I've done a video last month on something very similar to this, although the job was poorly done and was non-functional, this is functional. This is going forward about a year, which is why it concerns me, because anything that happens in regard to a catastrophic mistake, like a drain, which I have a few videos on. That drain flange was put on wrong. The, the, the whole configuration was done so wrong that from day one or week one, it was gonna leak. It was just a matter of how much it was gonna get used before you noticed it. In this case, going forward a year, this is over a year's worth of rot. So this is kind of also incrementally leaked from the get-go, but it's a very small leak that's gone on. Um, and not knowing the construction method, not knowing how if and or if they wrapped the curb, if they waterproofed anything, if they set the drain right, if they even glued the drain, that sometimes it's just something as simple as, you know, it was a, it was a brain fart where they just set the, the drain down there and forgot to glue it and started putting mortar around it. So incrementally, that could affect over here. It's possible that because they thought this is a concrete slab, they didn't need a pan liner. 
it's very possible that it's something simple as that. That if you took out all this mortar and this all this tile, that there is no pan liner. It's also possible that they used a topical membrane like Redguard and they just used this as a pan liner and poured the pan and some way or another, this is a very deep shower, some way or another somebody perforated one little area that now the shower pan is wet and it found that area and it's getting through and the wicking action begets what you see here. So, you know, again, it, it, it continues to be a mystery. There's, there's, there's absolutely no way to ascertain, as I've mentioned on a few other videos I have, what the crux of the problem is. Um, you, you, you literally have to kill the patient to find the disease when it comes to something like this because even if I knew what the problem was definitively, let's say for example I knew that it was that example I gave with the drain, um, I, there is still a possibility to cut this section out and to replace it. I've done that on a few occasions. It's not easy, but it's possible. Um, anything else that has to do with the, sh the shower pan liner or something wrong with the curb or something like that um, begets at least, at least one tile up all the way around and everything below that has to go away. Once that's done, you can start pulling things out and kind of usually find out what the issue is. Not always. Sometimes it's still a mystery, but you know, 90% of the time I can find out what the issue was. At that point, it's irrelevant. It's a mood issue. You've already torn everything out. A lot of people just want to go ahead and tear out the whole shower and throw out the baby with the baby water, but I don't suggest doing that unless there's just a lot of issues going that you don't like already, which I'm going to get to now. <laughs> Some of the issues here when I first come in, I try and... Uh, ascertain whether or not this guy was a tile guy, uh, specifically if he's uh, um, um, a shower and bath contractor as opposed to a tile guy who could just do backsplashes or floors. That could be still a tile guy. Let me recommend this tile guy to you. He did my backsplash, but it doesn't mean he knows about water and where water can ingress and things like that. So that's important to know. And I don't know that this guy was a backsplash flooring type of tile guy. I'm assuming that he was. There are some things on here that are very much on point and some things on here that aren't on point. So it becomes kind of a conundrum getting into this. He didn't offset the tile. This guy did. He did this tile in thirds, if you notice here. So I'm like, yes, that was perfect. There is no lippage going on. Did it in thirds, nice, smooth, easy job. But you come in here and all of a sudden you see lippage because he didn't offset the tile into thirds. Although that's not really on him. I have customers who intentionally say, I don't care, I want it staggered like brick. Okay, so I'm relegated to that. But look at this border. So the border, and it, I'm always relegated. One day they'll have 3D video. 3D video would be so much easier to show some of these, you know, little areas that were pushed in. It's wavy, you know, big gap down here, but no gap at the bottom. So that told me that, it, well, it tells me a lot of things. I'm not going to go on and on and on, but everything's kind of cockeyed and all that stuff. There are definite issues with setting a mosaic as a border, and I've gone into that with a couple of other videos. Where he made the mistake is, look at that huge lippage. Where he made the biggest mistake was that he thought that this would all match up to that, and it doesn't. When he set this on the floor, or whoever set it on the floor, this did match to that. The problem is you're using a lot of thin set to set the tile properly, both on the wall and on the tile. So now that buildup is like that, but yet you can't do a buildup like that on here. This has to set flat to something, so you have to bump this out with like quarter inch dirt rock. And, and if for thinner mosaic, it would be half inch dirt rock, and you would cut this four inch strip, or five inch as it were, five inch strip, and you would glue that to your backer board, your existing backer board. And then you would have that bump out that you need, and then this mosaic could set flat to that piece that you glued in there, which would make all this thing straight and wouldn't cause this guy so many problems because he definitely had a lot of problems setting this mosaic all the way around. All the way around. There are some telltale signs to me that he hasn't really done showers, um, but he, he's a good enough tile guy to call himself a tile guy, but he needs to stay away from the shower part. Look at there. So, kind of even at the bottom, and then a good quarter inch gap at the top here. 
and then of course grout a year later is still still on the surface uh, which isn't good um, so yes there's a lot of issues here which wow that one's popped out um, there's a lot of issues here which, which tell me this guy hasn't really dealt with showers before it's very complicated when you get in the showers it's not doing a backsplash or a wall a huge that's at least half an inch grout line and then to nothing over here um, 45 cuts okay you did 45 cuts well over here and here but what happened here you know so what happened there I don't know um, another thing too on the inside of these niches there's these strips why because he's relegated to this two and a quarter bullnose which he also had on the outside of here so he's buying a bunch of bullnose and setting them in there and going whoops I still have another inch to cover what do I do See, I don't do that. If you were a, a, a normal, regular type of tile guy, he would either go to a tile place and, and get his field tile cut to whatever the size is, three inches, and cut to three inches and bullnosed, or he would get a bullnose blade and put it on his tile saw to do these cuts properly because it just looks like crap to me. And then look at here, you have about an eighth of an inch grout line and then it spreads out to about half an inch right there. Um, so is it passable? Yes, I suppose to some people it would be passable. It's kind of aesthetic. It kind of bothers me. This bothers me too. This is tilted and I can see it definitively. It tilts to the left and then it goes up to the right or maybe that's an illusion because of the grout line. Um, no, this tile is definitely tilted. Little things like that bother me, and that's when I kind of ascertain whether or not this guy had built a shower before. He's definitely done tile before. He knows enough to do a backsplash or a floor, but he doesn't know enough to do a mosaic in here. I don't know how, if this was done that badly, uh, you can see. I don't know if I can even get this camera in, in a good position. You can see that there's a lot of dips. Well, maybe you can't see, but there's definitely dips here. There's pooling that's going on right here. The drain is kind of offset. It's not level going across here. And then the pooling is happening. And, and, and in, in the same light that I was telling you, they're trying to get it level and even. Um, it's never going to happen up there the way he did it. And it's never going to happen down here, especially because you don't even have that ability to put you know, the half inch to rock down here. I don't know. Um, I don't know what the issue is in here. Without really getting into tearing things apart, there could be a lot of things that caused um, the little leak that's going on. And I say a little leak, it's, it's important to the homeowner because he wants to be able to use a shower, but he can't because he continues to have this leak going on and damage and it needs to be taken care of. And, there's no way to fixate on one area and say, yes, this is definitively a problem and we can fix it. There's, you can't do it. Everything that has to do with the leak in a shower, whether you're on a slab like, like he is or whether you're on a second floor, everything that has to do with a shower going bad or leaking is from this point all the way down. Everything else can be saved. You know, there's no point in taking all this stuff out as I referenced earlier. It's a waste of time and money because it's never gonna be that issue. It's gonna be from here the shower pan liner should go at least three inches above the curb. And, you know, assuming that you have a drain back up, you're coming up this high before water ever gets over the curb and therefore you're still saving your wall. So that's the short story to the reason for that. This is one, two, three, four. This is a four by seven foot shower, very large. The widest pan liner that they have at, at Home Depot and Lowe's is five foot. I suspect that that's probably one of the problems. I suspect that the pan liner doesn't reach up all the way. And if it doesn't reach up all the way here, I don't know how it was put over the curb. Maybe it only went halfway up the curb or only up to this point on the curb. I don't know that to be true. I don't know if the curb is made out of wood or made out of concrete. I don't know that it was waterproof. I don't know that the shower pan was waterproofed before all this tile was put down, I'm assuming not, and therefore you have a saturated pan, and if this was built out of concrete, the pan is married to the concrete curb, and therefore the whole thing is saturated, 
which begets the saturation of the floor outside of here and begets the saturation of the wood over there. So it's a guessing game at this point. Uh, there are other things, other issues that you could look at. One of the things I noticed, because there are so many, this is um, a temperature control mixer. This is off and on for this, this is off and on for that, and this is off and on for the four body sprays over here. Volume control, if you will. So it could be that there, because there's so much plumbing going on here, that any one of these things could be an issue. Um, earlier, before I started taping, I noticed that water was coming out of here, and it's possible that excess water is built up inside the hose, and it's just kind of trickling out. But as I took off the end of this hose from the nipple, water is just continuing to come out. So that that kind of tells me on the other side of here, there's an opposing nipple that goes into the pipe that runs over here. Um, if they didn't put Teflon tape or pipe dope or something like that on there, they could have a leaking thing going on behind the wall where the leaking is actually going on behind the wall, following the path of least resistance down to the concrete, saturating the concrete completely until it actually rears its head over there. Is that a possibility? Very rare, very slim, but I'm just opening up to the idea that that is a possibility. So the suggestion is to actually go on the other side of the wall, cut out some sheetrock, check your plumbing, make, sh make sure that you have no leaks going on with any of these, these um, fixtures and go forward from there. This thing continues to leak all the time, so you know my best guess is that if nothing else, one of these valves have to be changed out. It could also be something as simple as a curb, or sorry, it could also be something as simple as the bench. If the bench wasn't constructed right, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that it was cinder block, but if it wasn't sloped, which it was, but regardless, if it wasn't, if there's if there's any issues with water penetration going into the cinder block, that cinder block could saturate the pan, which begets saturating this whole area, and therefore, you know, cause you the problems. There are so many things. But in the end, uh, as I said at the very beginning, there's no way to ascertain. It could be simple as, you know, the, the configuration for the drain not plumbed properly, not glued in. It could be something simple as this leaking behind the wall and transferring, you know, that moisture to the outside area. It could be one of these body sprays. You know, there's, there's really no way to know this is an exterior wall, so you would have to go behind the exterior wall to find that out. Or, you know, take off a few of these tiles. The problem is this shower was built well over a year ago and finding matching tile is always, always an issue. So there's no way to tell, you know, from, from the curb to the bench to the drain to the shower fixture to, you know, who knows the way they constructed something. Everybody does things a different way. Um, I, I, don't, um, I don't guess to know what's going on either. You know, when, when I am called on something like this, it's pure guess. Yes, there's an experience involved in it, but insofar as finding out definitively what the problem is, as I said in the beginning of the video, it's a mood issue. Everything has to be taken out. There's, there's hardly anything you can do retroactively, retroactively to, um, to mitigate the, the problem. My suggestion um, to this homeowner is, as I said before, take out the sheetrock behind this, these fixtures. Make sure that it has nothing to do with your plumbing. You know, get a moisture meter, you know, do, do a reading in behind the wall, and then do a different reading where you know it's dry, so you can compare the two, find that out. That's the easiest thing to fix and the easiest thing to repair on the back side. Second thing I'd probably do is take out this curb. They're, they're a little lucky here because there's these separate pieces that have been put in instead of one large piece that would be much harder to take out except for this, this front part. But again, this front part could be reconfigured in such a way like it never even happened. So I'm not too concerned about that. I would probably take out all these pieces on the top and this outside so you can get a dissection and find out what's going on, find out the building method they used and go forward from there. If it's not that and it's not this, then it must be the drain area. I, I say it must be the drain area. That's the third thing that you could actually retroactively fix and get it like it never even happened. 
Other than that, you're relegated to taking out this whole material from 12 inches up all the way down. Um, doing the whole shower, you know, an easy 15, 20,000. So I never recommend taking out this whole area just because this area has failed. But this area still is in question and um, trying to find out the problem that you're having on your house is going to be the same. If you're watching this video because you have a leaky shower, I'm letting you know all these these variables are the same variables I have on every shower. There's no way to to go in and fix something. It's a it's a pure guessing game. You can call a plumber all you want, but I've never had a plumber say yes you have a leaky drain and been able to fix it, or yes you have a leaky shower fixture. That's just never happened. It's always a good guess to go into that, but it's never happened with me yet. It's always going to be, in my experience, the curb, a bench, or a knee wall. And I, what I mean in knee wall, if your shower has two full walls and a half wall, that half wall is a knee wall because your shower fixture is always opposite to your knee wall and it slams water on it all the time. And there, therein lies your problem. If I had some type of pictures of a daily process when they built this shower, I could definitively say where they messed up and then go in there and fix it. But if you're having a shower built, this is why I do my videos so that you can understand where these failures happen and why they happen. Um, and you know, do with it what you will. But you know, I, I post it because I, don't, I feel bad for people who have to spend more than they need to. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, then subscribe. Hit that button and subscribe. I make nothing off of YouTube, so please be a Patreon member. I'm gonna post a link down below to my Patreon account and you can donate a dollar, five dollars, ten dollars, twenty dollars a month. Just pledge that that on a monthly basis that will help me produce more videos and, and content so that you can watch and learn from my channel. And donate at least fifty dollars if you're gonna call. If you're gonna call for advice, donate to my PayPal, please. Donate first and then feel free to call me or email me uh, for advice. Otherwise, business calls only, please.